for <laughs> Ireland as they waltz with Matildas in their historic World Cup opener in just a few hours. He's moved us around so that we're in the right order for the flag because his OCD is going so it feels weird. Now, looking back on their incredible journey to success and ahead to this morning's opening game is Dan McDonald from the Irish Independent. And live from Australia in the stadium is editor of the journal, Sinead O'Carroll. Good morning to you both. It is so lovely to have you here. It, Dan, it just feels kind of magic. There's something, you know, going on. Everyone's kind of excited around this uh, this morning. But let's talk about what this team has gone through in the last six years. Like, they, you know, they didn't have kit, they didn't have changing rooms in 2017. And now they're at a World Cup. Like, the development has been phenomenal. Yeah, it's surreal. Like, you see the, um, the footage of the team arriving into the airport. And if you think that in 2017, and maybe the nadir of that whole time was the team speaking about having to change their tracksuits in airports when they come back. You know, that, you know, there are players in this squad who've been through that experience where you're sort of out of sight, out of mind. And to come from that point to now, what, 75,000 people in the stadium today, a sort of an entourage, like, you know, the camera crews following through the airport that maybe, you know, you know, the men's team might take some of this for granted. Um, mm -hmm. But for them, I think even the profile of this team now, um, there are some new faces, but a lot of them have been around and they've been through the worst days and now I guess they're living the best ones. You think of Jack Charlton and what, the impact that he had on Irish teams in the past and how the buzz and all, they almost um, punched well above themselves. We, we're seeing that with Vera Pau at the moment as well. How special is he? Cause, uh, is she? Because you know she's had her own controversies, but she's trying to put that all behind her and bring out the best in these girls. Yeah, and like you know, sometimes I think maybe in football in Ireland you need to you need to shake the going back all the time to exactly, Italia ninety yeah. and Euro eighty eight, and yet you can't avoid the parallels. You know, someone coming in, so a new face to the country has taken a team and made them pretty hard to beat, and they've they've made that landmark step to this tournament stage and mm -hmm. and. They're up against it. There is no doubt that they're up against it. Yeah. But in a way, they're up against it to get here. And they're just going to have to draw on the same attributes that got them here yeah. to, to stay here. So, um, and of course, yeah, we're waiting to see what the long-term impact, of course, will be too, which is the next step of it. And the next generation, and that's something that's really mm. exciting, I think, for young footballers who are looking forward to this. But let's get to where our boots are on the ground. And that is uh, Sinead O'Carroll, who is in her very much journalistic capacity uh, right now. She's got no bias whatsoever. Sinead, what's the atmosphere like in the, in the lead-up to this uh, match with Australia? So... Australians are mad about their Matildas. So like across the city in Sydney, like I came out of the train station the other day and I was just greeted with a huge big image across a glass skyscraper of Mary Fowler. Um, there's lots of chat, you know, getting into cabs and everything. There's lots of chat about the World Cup. I met some guys who were going to do Barbenheimer today and they were really disappointed that they had messed up and won't be able to watch the football tonight. Um, so, yeah, there's really good vibes, but there are so many Irish around the city. Sam Kerr said yesterday in a press conference that, you know, she was really excited to play in a stadium where over 75,000 people would be rooting for Australia. And I was thinking... Sam did not get the message about how many Irish people are going to be in the stadium today. We're thinking there'll be probably over 25,000 Irish people uh, in Stadium Australia today. The atmosphere was already building in Sydney when I was leaving. We're, we're here in the stadium now in the press room, but the atmosphere was already building in the city as I was leaving there this morning. So, um, yeah, I can imagine there'll be there'll be thousands of uh, strong Irish voices by the time 8pm rolls around. Uh, it's mad because we moan all the time on this show about how many Irish doctors and nurses and <laughs> teachers <laughs> and everybody <laughs> leaves to go off to Australia. But this is their chance to put the green jersey on and do Ireland people, you know, the whole country so proud and really cheer on the girls. And they are, and there's people coming for loads of reasons. So I talked to as many people as possible this morning to see why they had come. So loads of people from Melbourne and lots of soccer fans, lots of people who have followed this particular team, but loads of people who also were like, you know, I, I wanted to come and have the Irish party. And then other people who did just say they wanted to put on the jersey and support the women. Um, like one, one, one girl said to me, I wouldn't have paid for a flight to watch the men's, but I thought it was important that I could do it for the women. So, um, yeah, there's definitely a specific uh, audience for this team as well. Um, and this team have given a lot of themselves to that audience as well. They're really, really good to the fans and they really are thoughtful about their legacy and about, you know, wanting to grow the grassroots game here and making sure that they are inspiring younger girls. Um, I met a 12-year-old here who's here with her parents because her parents... Uh, 
promised that if they qualified, they could go to the World Cup. Um, and they kept the promise. So the three girls are here with their parents. And that girl used to practice after watching YouTube, YouTube clips of men playing football. And now because she has got to know all of these women, she's able to, you know, navigate women's football. So now she watches YouTube clips of girls playing football and goes out and practices the skills she's seen there. So that's a huge uh, shift yeah. uh, in just a few years on uh, like, so, you know, the, the girls are making yeah. that legacy that they want to make. Um, we just saw photos there um, and drone footage of, uh, I think it was Irish people who were in Australia and they Come did on, the hashtag Koi gig, which they just got together and did in a Sydney. shape of themselves. It's fantastic right. to see that. But let's talk about the actual match tonight because they're opening up against the hosts. The Matildas are a phenomenal team. Uh, what does Ireland need to do today to get the best possible result? Yeah, like there's two things kind of happening at once uh, this evening. Like there's this big moment, you know, huge sellout. That the stadium is so vast, it's sold out. So and it's the first time Ireland are at a world women's World Cup. So there's that moment has to happen, and we really have to enjoy that, and we have to, you know, really cherish it for what it is—that historic, brilliant achievement. But then the match starts, and then there's going to be ninety something minutes where we have to try and keep a very attack-minded Australia team quiet and hopefully nick something ourselves at the end. It's a really tough ask. There's kind of two scenarios that play out in my mind that we do settle into it well, that we could, um, what Amber Barrett calls, park the bus. They're, they do enjoy defending this team and they don't mind um, sitting back that little bit uh so if they can do that maybe for 60 minutes and frustrate Australia, I think there is a way that we could get a draw out of this game. But Australia are so strong. They have so many good players, not just Sam Kerr, not just Mary Fowler. They've really pacey wingers. Um, so there is a scenario that, you know, we we could take a Come a on, heavy Sinead. Loss, but <laughs> we got I'm, I'm trying to be more optimistic, but I mean, you know, this is a World just to Cup. keep people's expectations in check. In every sport, <laughs> you know, when Ireland go to a World Cup and soccer, especially one of those ones, we have you know, we've outperformed it, you think of against Italy, you think of some amazing mm. results in years gone by. So, I mean, yes, Ireland are 22nd in the rankings, Australia 6th, Canada 6th. Like, it is a difficult mm. group. But do you think the hype and the buzz around it that we could see the girls maybe try and sneak some results? I'm so. feeling your optimism here. Like, I think... Look, it is the group of death. I know it's, and, and we, we always look at things through Irish eyes, but even listening to some of the more neutral previews from around the world, that is the common view that this is a, a testing group. But okay. I suppose the one thing is that, like Vera Pau's side, have gone to Sweden and got results. They've taken on difficult games to prepare them for this. They are a defensive team and yeah. they are in a group where they need to defend. Um, and it's true, there's pressure on Australia. The other two teams in the group, Canada and Nigeria, have had interrupted preparations, a bit of internal strife. So I think Ireland just need to get through today, you and know, and then, and then sort of get some confidence from it and then see where they can go in the rest of the competition. And we shouldn't get away from the fact that even just qualifying, given where Ireland were back just, what, six five, years ago. six years ago. Yeah, I know. Actually, yeah. qualifying for this World Cup is a remarkable statement Phenomenal. as well. Yeah, no, that's it. It's, and it, they don't want it just to be like a once-off adventure, yes. although there is a... That vibe is around it, um, but... It's about that vibe, more it's not than just that. The, yeah, because that vibe is always there. We're going on tour in Europe and the Euros yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It's great to have that. But I don't know, there just feels like there's some sort of belief around them as well. Like, in six years, what they've done has been absolutely amazing. Yeah. Sinead, we're going to be annoying you for the next couple of weeks, obviously, um, for uh, all uh, the colour, but also what's going on with the team. We hope that you enjoy every second of it and uh, and you can get your jersey on when you get out of the press room. Uh, Sinead Carroll from the <laughs> journal .ie. Thanks Thank so you much. so much. And Daniel McConnell from the Irish Independent. Thank you Thank for you. joining Cheers, us. Dan. Cheers, Dan. Enjoy the game.